Hello and welcome to the 10th anniversary of the Skoll World Forum. Isn't it? <laughs> Isn't it amazing that we've been coming together this way for an entire decade? While we still haven't quite solved all the problems in the world yet, I'm encouraged and inspired by the progress we see all around us. As the voices in the video so clearly articulated, we live in a time when we're interconnected as never before. Being part of this interconnected community and enjoying the company of inspired social entrepreneurs are two of the reasons I really enjoy coming to this forum every year. And I heard a story a few days ago that underscores why this may be. A little old lady sold pretzels on a street corner for a dollar each. Every day, a young man would leave his office building at lunchtime, and as he passed the pretzel stand, he would leave her a dollar, but never take a pretzel. This offering went on for more than three years. The two of them never spoke. One day, as the young man passed the old lady's stand and left his dollar as usual, the pretzel lady spoke to him for the first time in three years. Without blinking an eye, she said, they're a dollar and a quarter now. <laughs> that pretzel lady had a quality we greatly admire in social entrepreneurs, and that is what in Yiddish we call chutzpah. You might also call it moxie, brazen nerve, or sheer guts. By any definition, you have chutzpah in spades. And it's chutzpah that allows you, without blinking an eye, to make outrageous requests and change the world. And there is powerful evidence of this change all around us. We are nowhere near the finish line, but we can and should celebrate the progress of your work in recent years. In that spirit, I present my top 10 list from the world of social entrepreneurship over the past decade. Number 10, technology drives social, social drives technology. Six out of every seven people on the planet own a mobile phone. You can use technology for everything, from sending money to your mother in Nepal to diagnosing that cut on your finger there is an enormous potential for change that arises when we all have access to information and social entrepreneurs capitalize on this change like no one else. Number nine, global commitments to scaling up innovation. Thank you, United Kingdom. Thank you, Canada. Thank you, United States, for within the past 10 years, recognizing the effectiveness of social entrepreneurship and empowering social entrepreneurs in their own communities. This has sent a strong signal around the world about the strength of government commitment. And it's an important validation for all of our efforts. I'm still waiting on my invitation to Buckingham Palace, though. <laughs> Number eight, Muhammad Yunus and Grameen Bank win the Nobel Peace Prize. It doesn't get more impressive than this, the ultimate recognition for Muhammad Yunus, the ultimate social entrepreneur. Number seven, and who would have thought it, the next year, Al Gore and the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change also received the Nobel Peace Prize, a testament to the growing wave of social entrepreneurship in the world. Number six, Deforestation rates on the decline. This is a promising trend we're seeing in some parts of the world. For example, Brazil, which had previously been responsible for about one third of the world's forest carbon emissions, has radically reduced deforestation so that over two billion tons of carbon are not being put in the atmosphere. This battle isn't over yet, as we'll hear from Marina Silva later in the conference, but to date, this is the single greatest reduction in carbon emissions that we have ever accomplished. Number five, clean water. We take water for granted, but if you have to do without, 
you know how important it really is. Over the past 20 years, over 2 billion people have gained access to improved drinking water. In fact, the Millennium Development Goal to cut in half the proportion of people without access to safe drinking water was met in 2010, five years ahead of schedule. <laughs> Number four, social entrepreneurship goes mainstream. Ten years ago, we may have been seen as rogue disruptors on the edge, slightly off kilter. Today, social entrepreneurship has gone mainstream because of your success. Recent estimates say around 40 million people and 200 million volunteers are working in social entrepreneurship worldwide. <laughs> Number three, shifting of markets towards sustainability. When your corner coffee shop promotes fair trade coffee and McDonald's offers sustainably sourced fish, we know we are in the midst of a powerful trend. Companies now realize they can achieve profitability and sustainability without sacrificing humanity. Number two, <laughs> significant progress against significant killers. A decade ago, the world was still trying to figure out how to fight diseases like malaria, TB, and HIV AIDS. Today, over eight million lives have been saved from those diseases alone and the infrastructure is in place to save millions more. And the good news goes on. Guinea worm is poised to be the next human disease eradicated, the first one since smallpox, and polio is expected to be next in line. We're also, yes, absolutely. <laughs> We're also getting faster at detecting and responding to pandemics. What took almost six months in 1996 took only 20 days in 2010. That's still too long, but we're getting even quicker. And the number one accomplishment in the world of social entrepreneurship over the past decade, drum roll please, thank you. <laughs> Fewer people living in poverty than ever before. For the first time since poverty trends have been monitored, poverty rates have fallen in every developing region. 20 years ago, almost half of the people in developing countries were living in poverty. Now, it's closer to 20%. If we continue along these lines, we could bring extreme poverty to virtually zero within one generation. Some would call this impressive progress. We call it a good start. But if we thought the world was fragile 10 years ago, it may be even more so now. Our rapidly increasing population intensifies climate change. We've had some major weather events, from ravaging droughts to retreating glaciers to massive storms such as Hurricane Sandy. But there are promising signs as well. More countries, corporations, and leaders are stepping up to address the incredible damage we've done to our planet. For example, our friends at Ceres persuaded the US government to force public companies to disclose their risk from climate change. This small but significant victory helps us understand what might be possible if companies and investors take the long-term view. <laughs> the list of challenges facing us in the next 10 years is long. The good news is you have all proven that large-scale positive change is possible. And I know that if anybody can solve these issues, it is you. <laughs> it is because of the potential of our community that I am hopeful that if I were to make a top 10 list for a future forum, it might include 
Every child, female or male, wealthy or poor, born anywhere in the world, receives a basic education. <laughs> or pandemics are found only in the history books. <laughs> Weapons are sold only in antique stores. <laughs> Ambitious, yes. Possible, absolutely because social entrepreneurs like you will keep doing it until we truly live in a sustainable world of peace and prosperity. <laughs> On this 10th anniversary, I am personally inspired by your commitment to solving the world's most pressing problems and the spirit in which you do this incredible work. I thank you for your work on the front lines from the bottom of my heart for the privilege of your partnership. I look forward to what we will create together this week and in the years to come. Thank you.